I have another reason for Gemini to get in here. And he's spawning in the upper right hand corner of the map. And his name rhymes with map for the Genair Green Wings. It is Trap. And his opponent in the lower left hand corner for the Dragon Phoenix Gaming Esports team. It is our Red Protoss. Party. Nice little PvP. Just, you know, just gonna be a nice calm PvP. I'm sure we won't have anything weird going on in this game. Not at all. 47 is dropping the gift sub to Eric Deward. Thank you, my friend. Aw, oh, man. Eric drops the nice little compliment. 47 is gifts him the sub. I love it. I love seeing that kindness in chat. Uh, Parting's Probe is moving out. Both players are actually just scouting. Neither dropping their second pylon out on the map. And that makes me even more worried. Makes me even more worried because we're not going to see a normal game. I mean, all right, it's PvP. I guess what is normal? It's the real question. Um, I don't think we're going to see a big macro game uh, where each player is on three bases making charge on Archon Immortal. And then eventually they have a fight and it goes one way. I don't think we're gonna see that. So what are we gonna see? Because Parting's Parting's kind of a goofball. And his playstyle reflects that. It's what I love about Parting. Some players, their playstyle reflects their personality, and I think Parting has that more than almost anybody else. Now Parting open with double stalker into double sentry. Trap open double adept into double sentry. And now parting moving out with these stalkers. Going to be able to catch these adepts. Or maybe not. Trap actually is going to have to defend against this stalker opening. He doesn't have a lot of DPS in this army. But I guess four units beats two. Even when those four units aren't particularly good versus stalkers. Some nice micro here so far from Trap. And this low ground shield battery is going to help keep him alive. Meanwhile, both players taking their nexuses. Twilight and Forge coming up for parting. Robo the choice here for Trap. And now Trap getting a little bit aggressive. Really wants to get this low health stalker, but not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yep, game just shaping up actually pretty normal here. We have Blink from Parting. This is not surprising at all. He's very good with Blink Stalkers. Oh, Parting was playing. Who, who did Parting play last week? He had a PvP last week. I think it was Zest. I think it was Parting versus Zest. And honestly, Zest kind of just outclassed him. Uh... I'm a little bit worried for parting since he's not doing anything super weird that the same thing might happen here from Trap because Trap is, I would say, a much more well-rounded Protoss player. And in a standard PvP, I would favor Trap. So I, I'm a little worried for parting, but maybe parting wants to, uh, wants to prove himself. You know, maybe he wants to show he can do more than just proxy a couple of robos and make immortals and Crush his opponent. Crush his enemy. Uh, plus one and blink on the way, but Trap is moving out. Trap didn't make that robo so that it could sit idly by. He wants to put some pressure on. And he is going to get scouted here. Oh, the Adepts are going to try to come up. No, they're going to try to get on top of these sentries. He lets the shade finish. The force fields go down. And the shield battery keeping sentries alive. Oh, no. All right, he gets one sentry. Not gonna get any more. 
just barely gets that pickup on the super low health sentry. Shield battery is almost out of energy, but parting recalls some stalkers, it looks like. Making some more shield batteries. He should be just fine back here, especially once Blink finishes in two seconds. There it goes. In fact, we might see a Blink forward to take out this prism. It's full of units. Trap's got to play. Be careful. He's playing fire right now. There is an Immortal here. He rallied it across the map. So a Blink forward not possible anymore. Well, it is possible, I guess, but uh, it's parting playing, not patience. So I think it's unlikely we see that Blink. Trap is now pulling back. I think that's wise. He's going to send out Hallucinated Phoenix to see some Stalkers moving across. He's got another Immortal out. He's chronoing out Immortals. Oh, and he's going for Glaives. That is a little surprising. That's an interesting choice here. Instead of going for Charge Lots, instead going for Glaives. Damn. Harding's going to grab a third base. So he's going to put pressure on with these Blink Stalkers, but he's not going to commit. He's not going to go hard. He just wants to try to get some scouting, maybe grab a stalker, or, or a sentry rather. Doesn't quite get that one though. Really nice pickup from Traps. So far, Traps micro with this War Prism has been on point. Blink Stalker's pulling back, blinking away, just trying to chip away at these units. Just gonna chip away. Camp chip away, you know? Glaives and Immortals coming out. Um, this Phoenix is going to fly over and see the Twilight Council, but I just don't think he's going to realize that Glaives is the tech of choice here. I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Guys in chat, let me know. Is Glaives a normal choice here? I guess maybe he's expecting the Charge Zealots and thinks that uh, Glaives is going to be more useful here. He's clearing out these rocks so that walking up this ramp is a little bit more reasonable and warping in a ton more Adepts. Trap is... He's just on two bases. He's down a bunch of workers right now. He's got to get some damage done. Parting is a little bit scared. He's throwing up a bunch of shield batteries. Even a photon cannon coming up. Oh, those force fields ended up working really nice uh, for parting. But Trap is up 30 army supply right now. And this is a beefy army. Another immortal is walking up. No shades from these adepts. Just fighting with them straight up. Shield batteries are straining to keep these units alive. The Stalkers are blinking back, but I don't know if it's enough. The Immortals are still alive, basically untouched in the back lines. And the Charge Lights just do nothing against the Glaive Adepts. The Glaive Adepts hard counter the Charge Lots here. Oh man, look at them just melt to this DPS and farting as nothing is on... Eight army supply just trying to warp in some units at the high ground. Shield battery is getting depowered. The third base was canceled in the meantime. And Trap is going to keep the pressure on. He's still up 20 army supply. Charge Zealots and now the probes coming off the line against Glaive the Depths. You know that's when things are bad. 17 workers falling. And now parting is down. And my friends. He is out of game number one. Trap is going to take this. There's the GG. With a beautiful two base. I don't want to call it an all in, but it felt pretty all in. Oh man, and an anonymous cheer with 11d11 bits. Thank you. A spooky ghost comes in. Ah, thank you so much for those 11d11 i appreciate it spooky ghosts are always haunting the chat with just lovely things all right game number two is going to be on nightshade players are ready we're counting down we're going to be loading in hopefully all the casters are in here it looks like it the other thing I like about Korea, doing the Korean Cup, is that there's just not as much, not as many casters. Like, for EU, we've actually had it, I think only one time I saw it happen, but we had it once where there wasn't enough space for every caster. So, like, 
some people just couldn't get into cast because we had too many people casting. And that's kind of scary when you're not Warty or Rifkin or like Zombie Grub. You know, one of these guys who uh, are the big names, you know? You're like, ooh, I'm, I might be on that chopping block, fam. But that's not the case here. So let's get into game number two. We're spawning in the lower right-hand corner of Nightshade. Is our red Protoss player for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. Down 0-1 in the series. Party. The fan favorite. Party. And his opponent in the upper left-hand corner. The blue Protoss from the Jin Air Green Wings. It is a Trap. Showing why he's a very powerful Protoss player. Parting has looked really, really good lately. He's had some fantastic results easily. The best player that's making a comeback right now. Um, there are a few others that are looking quite good as well, but none of them have made made the kind of strides forward that Parting has. Oh, and the probes find each other. These are the I'm scouting for your proxy probe. Uh, which means actually that neither player has proxied anything. In fact, both of them making their second pylon back at home. So we'll see if a third pylon goes out on the map, but it doesn't look like that is going to be the case. And again, uh, this makes me a little scared. Mostly for parting though, because we saw kind of why... Kind of what I was talking about, which is that in a standard PvP, I tend to favor trap. Now I like this move from parting. He's blocking off the ramp long enough to get the double adept out. And he, he might cancel this at the last second, but I think the adept should be able to kill the probe before the probe gets in and sees the robo here. Beautifully done from parting. And Trap sees nothing of his opponent's base. He doesn't see that the third pylon is in the base. He doesn't see that the robo is here. And that means Trap has to go out and scout. If that probe gets in, these stalkers probably just walk straight across the map um, and intercept these adepts. Now, he has still intercepted the adepts. He did see those as they killed his probe. Uh, and he's making his own robo. He's expanding. And it looks like Parting wants to take an expansion pretty soon here. Ooh, he's chronoing out an immortal, though. Interesting. Interesting. Trap looks like he might want to put some pressure on with quad stalker he's gonna be up against two stalkers and two adepts so he should be able to win this fight but that's why you chrono out an immortal <laughs> and trap is like oh okay bye i'm out of here four stalkers do four stalkers beat an immortal normally i'm pretty confident in saying no but it, it'd be pretty close it'd be pretty close immortal's pretty good against stalkers Now, Trap's Nexus was quite a bit earlier than Parting's. This does mean that his units are later. He's just now halfway through his first uh, his first Immortal. Parting's moving across the map right now. The army supply is very similar. This Immortal should be out by the time this gets across the map. There's a Warp Prism here for Parting, or for Trap, too. Um, warp Prism is... I'm not really sure what this Warp Prism is doing. Maybe a misclick here from Parting that's just sitting back at home. I feel like that should have been with his army already. The Warp Prism gives you a ton of micro potential. I just don't think Parting's really going to be able to do much with this attack. But we'll see. And maybe during this attack, Trap could get in with a couple of Adepts. He's got uh, Hallucinated Phoenix coming over, sees no army units. And he's going to see why. Oh, where's that Prism? Where's that Prism? Ah, dropping the Immortal on the low ground. 
some nice micro. He's got the shield battery here defending as well. Is it gonna be enough though? Parting's pushing in. He's taking out all the sentries here. A couple of adepts come down. Those are gonna be nice to help with this. Ah, uh, this war prism. He's gonna try to drop these immortals and just get some quick damage done. This immortal of Parting's getting kind of low. Oh, but it grabs one of the immortals of Trap. Oh, that's brutal, and Trap is left with not much. He does send the two adepts in, and they are clicked on some probes here. So while he's lost a few probes, so has Parting. But Trap's army supply is 10 down from Parting, and that's just going to be GG. He just doesn't have enough army here. And game two goes to Parting with a very aggressive uh, early game push there. Trap's defense just wasn't on point enough. His units might have been a little bit too split up at the start of that fight, I think. If all of his units had been on the low ground, I think Trap makes a much better fight of it. But well played by Parting. I was a little bit worried. I didn't think I didn't think moving in was the right choice there. Felt like Trap just had a little too much. But Parting, he knows better than I. If we're going into game three on Eternal Empire, we're all tied up one to one. Winner of this game moves on to the finals. The EU hours are more doable for audience numbers. It's true. More doable for, uh, I think just people's sleep schedules in general. Like right now, both Rifkin and I are casting at 12 48 a.m we're both in the pacific time zone i don't know what time zone cranky ducklings are in like i just don't know what time it is there i think they that might be the same for those guys uh as it is for korea so that's pretty decent time but yeah like wardy's not gonna be casting right now right so Definitely makes sense for time zone for a lot of the English viewer hours. It's funny because 1111 is also a barcode. True that, true that. Let's get into game number three. We're spawning in the lower left hand corner. This is Dragon Phoenix Gaming's parting. And in the upper right, for the Jin Air Green Wings, trap. That last game, Parting's attack, man. See, that's the kind of thing I think Parting does really well with. One base attacks um, in this matchup, like one base or any proxy shenanigans, I feel like Parting has really good control and he has really good like management of making sure things are going the way he wants them to go. The longer the game goes, the less control I feel like he has over it. And I feel like somebody like Trap or Zest or Stats is going to be better in a PvP the longer it goes versus Parting. But early game, one base attacks. That game, it was barely a two base attack. I think those are going to at least be even, but maybe even favor Parting. Also, what's up, Moss? How you doing? Quotation marks anonymous. Listen, I don't, I don't like calling out anybody, but there are <clears throat> certain people who really favor the number 1111. And I appreciate it. Spooky ghost or not, I appreciate it. Trap dropping that pylon just so we could see the two stalkers coming out. He also went for a Stalker, but got a Sentry as well. Who was the Stalker going to get it? No, not quite. A little bit of a messed up path there around the, the spike. The spike at the top of the ramp. 
Hallucinated Phoenix gonna head out so that Trav can get some scouting off. He's got his Nexus down, Parting has his down there about the exact same amount done. And both players going into that kind of Sentry Stalker opening. Uh, we have the Twilight Council going down for Parting, so it's gonna be more like game one. But the Robo for Trap, he's feeling that Robo, man. That's how he likes to open PvP. If it goes like this, plain standard. He likes to get that Robo down. Can't blame him. And this probe with one hit point after facing off against that Stalker holds the Zelnaga Watchtower like an absolute badass. You know, I never really looked too deep at the Zelnaga Watchtower. It's kind of interesting, though. It has, like, these breaks in it. It's got some interesting scripting going on. Some cool stuff. This hallucinated phoenix is going to be able to make it to the base. And it looks like Trap's moving out. He's got his own Haluk Phoenix. Which will head directly into the natural, see what's there. He sees a bunch of units. There's a shield battery, a second one going down. I don't think Trap's really going to be able to get much done with the, with the pressure here. He does have a couple of adepts that could try to slink their way in. Slide their way in. Nope, but it looks like parting is more than ready for it. Slaps down his wall. Behind this trap is getting his own Twilight Council. Both players have plus one, actually. On the way. That's a little bit different. Uh, in game number one, we saw Parting went for that plus one a bit quicker to match it up with Blink. Both players getting to kind of the same place, just a little bit differently. Is Trap going to go for the same two base attack style? No, okay. I was going to wonder if he was going to go for Glaives again, but the earlier Twilight Council, he's going in for charge this game, and I expect a third base here for Trap this game. Charge lends itself a bit better to a longer game. Glaives is like, I'm going to kill you right now with Glaive Adepts. But they're not, in my opinion anyways, not as good for the longevity of the game. Yeah, and he's getting a Temple Archive, so this is going to be Charge Lot Immortal Archon. We have some Blink Stalkers moving out now for parting. So he wants to put some pressure on. He's actually brought the Sentries with this. There's no Warp Prism, though, so it's not going to be reinforced at all. Oh, and these Adepts. Oh, parting pulls back the probe just in time. I don't think these depths are long for this world. They're going to finish their shade, but the blink says no. But he has to leave that third base that it looked like Parting was about to lay down. Parting, who is going to blink up into the main? Gets a pylon. And uh, yeah, just some nice micro here. Grabs a sentry as well. Ooh, loses, one, loses two stalkers for that. Maybe worth it. Uh, I think him delaying Trap's third Nexus is nice as well. Looks like he's going to grab his own. Is he, though? Hallucinated Phoenix. Still scouting around. We'll see the High Templar warping into an Archon here. And is Trap going to take a third base? I was expecting it, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. Both players have 1-1. One, one. They're both getting 2-2. Two, two. Charge isn't quite finished yet for parting, but it is done for Trap. And there you go. Trap is taking the third base. So is parting. Things are going to shape up pretty normally here. Parting's still trying to find some damage with these Blink Stalkers. Should be able to uh, still pick off a unit or two, or at least see if Trap is going to do a big move out. He has an Observer around as well. That will help. Ooh, Trap's Observer, though, seeing these Stalkers. Ah, Trap just sending a couple units at them, though. And this is the benefit of the Stalkers. Just like in PvT, they can just kind of take out a couple of units, do a little damage, blink away. And if Trap wants to attack, he's going to have to deal with that across the map. Now, Trap is up a good bit of army supply, 63 to 51. And to be honest, while these Blink Stalkers have some uh, good, good use cases 
in this matchup, they're not great in a straight up fight. Ooh, and one of them goes down parting with a little bit of uh, Miss Micro there. Now he has his own Archons, he has his own charge lots back at home. But honestly, Trap's army just straight up looks better. Um, he has less stalkers, but he has more immortals because of that. Immortals are pretty good versus just about everything. A hallucinated Archon here as well. As Trap sees there is no observer, this hallucinated Archon should be able to tank a good bit of damage. And so far, Trap taking a nice fight. Now pushing up this ramp is going to be very difficult. I don't know if Trap's really going to be able to do that. There's hallucinated Archons here as well. But the difference is Trap sees that they're Haluk. Oh, Parting breaks his Observer back. Look at these Observers. Just posturing. Ah, and Trap gets the victory in the Observer fight. No counter damage going on or anything like that. Parting is down a few workers at the moment. As Trap is just pumping out workers behind this, feeling good about his positioning. But as Parting continues to warp in units, he sends a hallucinated Archon forward, sees that there's nothing left out here. And Trap just goes home. Trap says that's fine. They both have plus two. Trap's plus three is started though, and there's no plus three started for Parting. Ah, Parting missing this upgrade. He either needs to attack before that's done. Yeah, he's gotta get that started. He's behind by a good bit. That's gotta be 20 or 30 seconds. These upgrades take a long time. And if Trap continually chronos this and is able to take a fight when that finishes, he could be in a really, really nice spot. And generally, I'm just favoring Trap's positioning here. If we take a look at the income graph, it's been a bit back and forth. But since Trap has been posturing outside, he has more workers. And uh, it's just been looking quite good for him. His army is bigger. The worker count is now evened up, though. Now that Parting's had a minute to chrono out a couple rounds of workers. He is a man, but he's also a chicken. Oh my god. The same spooky ghost, perhaps? We don't know. Anonymous gifting Mas Neotech prototype a sub. Thank you so much, my dude. I very much appreciate the gifted sub. The 11 11 bits. Lovely stuff from our resident spooky ghost. Not so spooky. More of a friendly ghost. Basically Casper. This is a lot of Archons from Trap. What does the Archon count? Nine. Parting has seven, which is still pretty solid. Ooh, but two of them are in this war prison. That's got to get recalled. That gets recalled immediately. As Trap comes in, Trap's sending these Immortals out front just to try to do some chip damage, and Immortals do a lot of chip damage. Ooh, got to pick them up, though. Got to pick them up. Get them out of there. There you go. Picks up the Hurt Ones. Oh, the Archons out front tanking all of these Zealot hits, and this looks like just a fantastic fight for Trap. But there is a Disruptor. Gets a really nice connection, actually. Kills the Stalker and that Archon that took a hit. Also nearly dying. There it goes. But these Immortals on the back line. Five Immortals just doing so much damage. Is there enough here for Trap? If we look at the supplies, Parting is actually way up in supply right now. He's up 20... Oh, no. I lied. Never mind. It's Trap that's up in supply. Trap avoids some of that damage, but really, he's killed the third base, and he's killed a bunch of workers, and the army is very, very close, and if Trap just takes a decent army trade here, that's going to be enough, and it looks like that's what's going to happen. I think, honestly, Parting might be able to push Trap away, but he's lost his third base. He's lost a bunch of probes. And Trap leaves. <laughs> he has got a fourth base up. Trap is just looking very solid here. All he has to do is wait for like two warp in cycles. He has his own Ruptors coming out now. Plus three, or plus one shields is about to finish. Plus three is done for both players. I didn't notice how it was during that fight. I didn't see if Trap hit the sharp timing of plus three finishing, because that might have uh, led that fight to go more in his favor. It was a little bit touch and go there. 
where the supplies are very, very close. But Trab, I just think the start of that fight went so much better for him. Those charge lots of parting went right into the Archons of Trap. And just got absolutely crushed. Parting's moving across the map. I mean, this is all he can do. He has to do it, but he's down a shield upgrade. He's down supply. He doesn't have any disruptors left. Trap has all of those things. He has supply. He has disruptors. All right, nice split from parting. Can he do it again? Nice split from parting. This Archon took a lot of damage, though. Oh, and the third one. Oh, my God. That's going to be GG. And game number three goes to Trap. He'll take the 2-1 and move on to the finals to face Cure.